Hi guys and welcome back. This week I'll dedicate to these two wonderful looking uh, digital audio players, the Shining M5 Ultra and the 5M23, but I'll start with a slightly smarter one with the M23, which sells for 750 euros here locally and for 700 US dollars in the USA. Although this is not a massive unit, as you can see, it has one ace under its sleeve. There is one thing which I don't like about this one and many other things which I like. And let's talk about this one in the usual fashion. Design-wise, it looks very similar to its predecessors like M11 Pro, M11 Plus, so it's sticking to the same design language. As you can see, it's blocky, it has sharp edges, but I like that Fire is uh, sticking to its lineage and this design language. Of course, we're talking about a fully CNC machined unit, so everything is aluminum. They will also have a stainless steel version that will probably cost a little bit more. It feels sturdy in my hand. It's a very solid unit. We don't have wobbling buttons or anything like that, and they are providing a satisfying click. I don't know if you can hear, uh, but overall, I like the look of this one. What I don't like is that we have inputs, outputs and buttons on all its four sides. So I would like in the future to have maybe two sides with buttons, inputs and outputs. That will be much nicer and much clearer looking. On its back, of course, we have a tempered glass that helps you with a better Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. And apart from this, uh, there is one small change as well. We don't have the 2.5 uh, millimeter balanced output. Right now, Fire is sticking to a much sturdier 3.5 mil regular jack and 4.4 mil balanced jack. They went with a 5.5 inch 720p screen, which I don't find very bright, but I'm dreaming about a day when Fire will go with a completely bezel-less look, reminiscent of a modern smartphone, just a little bit chunkier and thicker. Once again, we have an IPS panel, which offers good viewing angles and a decent contrast ratio. FIO has still some work to do when it comes to ergonomics. This is basically my only complaint that I have with this unit. As for tech inside, it rocks the same Snapdragon 660 CPU, uh, which uh, we already saw many times in plenty of FIO, Shining, hybrid devices. So, so uh, this is basically the most common CPU that you can see in every uh, portable digital audio player. And while it was good enough for a DAP something like three or five years ago, I believe that nowadays it's slightly uh, lagging behind considering it was released in 2017. I understand that higher performer CPUs will consume more power and it doesn't make any sense in a portable DAP, but maybe something fresher like a Snapdragon 6 Generation 1 will make more sense for a snappier operation. We have 4 gigs of RAM memory and of course 64 gigs of ROM memory where you can install all those third-party apps and all your music collection. If that is not enough for you, we have also a micro SD card slot. Uh, it supports cards up to 2 terabytes in size and I do recommend getting one because you can store a lot more music, lossless music, DSDs, you name it. Obviously, we have an unlocked version of Android 10, so you can install any third-party app you desire, including all those must-have streaming apps like Tidal, Cobus, Apple Music, so on and so forth. Moving on to everything that has to do with audio, we have an AK4499EX DAC chip together with an AK4191 Delta Sigma modulator for maximum performance. Its headphone amplifier section is based on a four-way THX AAA78 plus headphone amplifier modules, which FIO is improving for a very long time. And this is where we have an ACE under its sleeve. On battery power, on high gain via that 4.4 balanced output, it provides 475 milliwatts of power per channel via that balanced output. But if you engage a quick charger via that secondary USB Type-C input, then the power goes up, basically doubles to one watt or 1000 milliwatts per channel in the same load, so 32 ohms. Meaning that it can power much, much harder loads if you connect a quick charger to this one. It's important to know that we have 
a global parametric equalizer. So this is not your usual, you know, equalizer. It's a much more powerful tool that can be used in any operating mode. You can adjust the frequency points in the game, the bandwidth, allowing you to fine tune the sound to your preference. Last but not least, we have high grade electronics inside. We have high quality capacitors. We have higher grade film resistors compared to the M11S, for example. And yes, there are plenty of discrete components in here, a lot more than just mere op amps. Okay, guys, this is basically it. So let's hit some eardrums and let's check how this one performs. After trying out all the latest portable and desktop units of Fire, it's refreshing to know that finally Fire decided to go in a slightly different direction sound-wise with the M23. I do believe that there should be always a very you know, a thin line and a strong balance in between being sounding technical but also musical sounding. And sometimes Fire is attaining that fine balance, but sometimes not so much. And I wish to have more soul, more body, more richness with units like M17, with K19. And I really don't know who designed the M23, but I have a feeling that somebody else, or maybe there is a different direction uh, with the M23 because clearly it has a different tonality compared to all the latest devices. For starters, M23 has more than enough resolution even compared to pricier devices. And I didn't feel that the resolution drop from M17 or Hybe R8 Mark II to this one is substantial, uh, like it was the case with the Fire M11S. The music feels clean, there is a very precise amount of air in between the music and there is a decent amount of sharpness, but not too much of it. The leading edges are clear and defined, but luckily we're not getting a, a you know, fatiguing listening experience long term like it was the case with the M17 and K19 sometimes with some kind of headphones, IMs and so on. That is not happening in here. And I'm happy to report that this one actually leans towards warmth, uh, richness, lushness. So yes, there is some of that in here as well. It's a thin line between lush and clinical sounding, but uh, I'm happy to report that this one goes to that, you know, a rich side of music listening, infusing a little bit more life in the music and smoothing out the sound and adding some richness where there was very little of it. I honestly wanted for Fire to go back to their roots sound-wise, offering us a very seducing sound, you know, very lush, rich listening experience. I remember the very first uh, X3, I believe, portable digital audio player was something like that. It was not very technical, of course. That part I do not want. I do not want, you know, uh, unresolving and uh, muddy sounding players, but I do want that richness, that warmth. And I'm happy to report that M23 is a comeback to the old file sound, but without the drawbacks, without sounding and resolving. Compared to some other brands, Fire is very transparent with their tech specs, but most importantly, with the noise floor numbers, something that not a lot of brands are providing. So right here, we have a noise floor of 3.1 microvolts via super high gain and 4.4 balanced output and 1.9 microvolts uh, of noise via battery power on high gain. So that is a very low noise floor. Actually, a much pricier M15S provides a higher noise floor of around 5.2 microvolts. So that one is noisier. And also this one is basically on the same level uh, but slightly better with their M17, which is considerably pricier. Also, in terms of dynamic range, this one provides by 6 dB more compared to the M15S, which costs 1,000 US dollars. What that means is that this one will sound slightly more detailed, uh, slightly more transparent, while having a lower noise floor uh, with ultra sensitive loads like IMs. So of course I connected some of the most sensitive IMs that I have in my possession. Uh, the Fire FX15, the Hybe Zeta, High Performance Van R, of course directly on its 4.4 mm balanced output on the high gain. And regardless of how loud I was going, even past safe volume limits, uh, it was completely dead silent. So I couldn't 
hear absolutely anything except for the sound, for the music, of course. And the next thing I do, I connect that supercharger via its secondary USB Type-C input and I'm unlocking its, uh, you know, super high gain mode. And I remember that with the M15S that was again providing a very similar power output, it was a little bit noisy in that mode and super high gain. Uh, with ultra sensitive uh, IMs, but uh, you know, to my surprise, this one is completely noiseless, even via super high gain mode, via 4.4 balanced outputs with all my IMs. Of course, I do not own those uh, super low impedance IMs. Uh, the lowest I have, I believe, is 16 ohms, but even with those, with all of them, basically, this one is completely noiseless. And I think that it should be noiseless even with those ultra low impedance IMs, uh, if not on super high gain, on high gain for sure. Even when using the desktop mode, which is basically bypassing its internal uh, battery and you're using that uh, external charger and you know the power supply from the charger, it was again noiseless sounding with all my IMs. And that means we have an amazing, uh, noise rejection with this one and that makes me quite happy. Moving on to power output, this is where I started juggling all sorts of uh, headphones from dynamic to planar magnetic, from closed back to open back headphones uh, via high gain mode, so via battery power on the 4.4 balanced output. Unsurprisingly, all the usual suspects like uh, these three headphones, the Mezi Elite, the Zetich Caribdis, Phobos, uh, Kenyatton Rogner worked just outstanding. I couldn't go higher than 85 out of 120 steps available volume wise because the sound pressure level was already going past 95 dB, so it was already very loud. The only thing that I didn't like with this one, especially with planar magnetics, is that it didn't have a strong kick in the pants. Uh, the low end was not very punchy. Uh, it was controlled, but it was a not very dynamic sounding unit. But after engaging that super high gain and including a fast charger and unlocking that uh, sleeping power one watt per channel, I got exactly what I wanted because dynamics went back. Uh, the bass was much more fun sounding this time around. It was reaching a little bit deeper. Uh, fun fact, it was also a little bit more controlled and you can feel that especially with planar magnetic headphones. So yes, it can be punchy, but only if you attach a fast charger and you unlock that super high gain mode and one watt of power. And yes, it can drive even planar magnetic headphones. Uh, I won't talk too much about dynamic headphones because it was easily driving them all, including the HD800S. Uh, so yes, this one can drive desktop headphones without too much trouble. And I really like that Fio is basically offering us two options. Uh, you can go battery power, high gain with ultra sensitive IMs, with portable headphones, with Bluetooth headphones, or you can unlock that fifth gear uh, via desktop mode, super high gain mode with desktop headphones. Moving on to sound stage and imaging. I don't know what happened, I don't know why it happened, but the channel separation of uh, M23 sits at 117 dB, so basically by 11 dB higher compared to M15S, which is more expensive. Also, dynamic range is higher by 6 dB compared to that one. So even without doing any kind of head-to-head -head comparisons, I know that this one will be more resolving, and also the sound, the space in between the most left and right sounds will be wider and bigger on M23. And that's exactly what I'm hearing when music starts playing. This one is really outstanding in terms of soundstage, uh, depth of the music, layering, imaging, absolutely outstanding. I did actually plenty of head-to-head -head comparisons and the most interesting one was versus the high B. R8 Mark II. This is an amazing sounding digital audio player. Very rich, very lush sounding, very resolving. And while this one was more impressive in these regards, M23 was bigger and deeper sounding in terms of soundstage and depth. And that's, uh, I do believe, the strongest skill of the M23. It's really quite impressive. Just connect some open back, uh, you know, planar headphones or dynamic headphones and you immediately start realizing that the sound is basically breathing, there is 
uh, plenty of space in between the notes, the sound is shrinking or uh, you know, getting bigger depending on what music you are listening. So yeah, the sound stage is easily a uh, 10 out of 10. Resolution is also slightly higher than usual compared to its predecessors and I'm pretty sure that those discrete components made it more transparent and less flat and boring sounding. I did compare this one also with the Shining M5 Ultra and it was very apparent from the start that this one is even a richer sounding, slightly punchier sounding via battery power, but this one was definitely uh, more resolving, adding more nuance, um, more micro detail compared to the Shining. Also, what's more interesting is that the added resolution is not bringing forward uh, more sharpness, more leaning edge, like it was the case with M17 and K19. So I get just the resolution, but without the added sharpness. Uh, an effect which I like quite a lot with this one. And exactly for these reasons, I feel that uh, M23 will not impress you right away with lots of sharpness and uh, leading edge like M17 and K19 will be doing, but over time you'll start appreciating this a little bit more because in two hours music will still be playing on M23 and you'll probably turn off the M17 due to a little bit of listening fatigue. I feel that its resolution is not uh, pushed to the extreme and the same goes for sharpness, so I believe there is just enough of it but not too much of it like it was the case with M17. You feel that the resolution is going to the extreme with M17, providing the last drop of information, but it wasn't putting me into a relaxed state of mind. M23 on the other hand was clean sounding enough, offering a good deal of emotions and warmth, something that M17 didn't provide when needed. Moving on to dynamics and transients, this is the only area where I feel that desktop headphones um, are sounding more impressive and will get you know, more impressive via that super high gain mode that unlocks that one watt of power per channel as opposed to high gain. That is no longer the case with ultra sensitive IMs with portable headphones. I didn't feel a massive difference between super high gain, high gain, medium gain, all of those were punchy, quite visceral. Uh, it had an amazing control over the drivers, but it was quite a different story uh, with desktop headphones, especially with planar headphones. I was actually comparing this one with the Shining M5 Ultra with my son, and even at 10 years old, uh, he told me that the Shining was slapping his ears a little bit harder, and it was the other way around when I engaged that super high gain mode on this one, and this one was slapping a little bit harder compared to the Shining. And if you use portable headphones or ultra sensitive IMs, then I don't feel that this one is lacking a harness, drive, punch, kick down low, that is not really the case. But if you have, and if you want to drive desktop headphones, uh, then you'll feel a slight drop in terms of dynamics via battery power and that's where that super high gain and desktop mode is coming to save your day. I won't say it was lightweight or uh, ethereal sounding via battery power because that was not really the case, uh, but it wasn't exactly making me dance to the rhythm of the music and if you need more drive, more low end punch and control, then Again, super high gain mode is exactly what the doctors have prescribed. Moving on to frequency response, while this one is linear sounding and nothing feels out of balance in terms of frequency response, I can say that its mid-range and bass is more forward compared to what I've got with its predecessors like M11 Pro and M11 Plus, and slightly more mid-range compared to the M15S, which had an amazing bass performance. We have a slightly longer trail of the notes, uh, longer sustain, longer vibration of the vocal cords of wind instruments, string instruments, so you have more time to appreciate the beauty of the mid-range. Uh, I personally like this kind of mid-range, this kind of performance, and I appreciate to have this kind of slightly higher saturation and blooming in the mid-range. The bass is quite punchy, quite alive and visceral with IMs and portable headphones, but if you want to make it so with desktop headphones, then you need to engage that uh, super high gain mode, desktop mode via that balanced output. Otherwise, it can be feel a little bit dynamic, uh, a little bit lacking energy, drive and punch 
uh, especially with planar headphones that desire a little bit more uh, amperes than voltage. But there is one thing that is different compared to their M17 and even compared to M15S, and that is the treble edition. If you go to Fire's website, you'll see uh, hundreds of discrete components used in this one. So plenty of diodes, plenty of resistors. And that is basically, or I do believe, the final act that makes it less itchy, less harsh in the treble, but more natural sounding in here. So there is plenty of detail and uh, shimmer and uh, you know definition in the treble, but there is no listening fatigue, there is no fake ringing in the treble. So you can listen to hard rock, to metal tunes on this one, and it will not bother you. Of course, you'll get your trebles strong, defined, and punchy, but forget about listening fatigue. That was sometimes happening with the M17 and M15S. Overall, M23 is much easier to listen to, and I hope that Fire will awake from their deep slumber and start developing products with more soul, with more richness into them, because listening to dead neutral units can be boring at times. Wrapping up, it was clear to me that I enjoyed the sound of M23 a little bit more compared to their M15S, which wasn't a bad dub by any means. Not only we have a very similar feature set and power output, but we have a slightly higher dynamic range and a much higher channel crosstalk, meaning that the sound is simply bigger and the noise floor is lower, so you can use a wider variety of ultra-sensitive IMs. The biggest selling points for me was actually its tonality and uh, its sound staging capabilities, because I do believe this one is impressive in this regard. This one is richer sounding, this one is closer to my reference setup in terms of musicality, you know, tonality, richness, so on and so forth. And I personally like this kind of sound because music is about emotions, not about, for instance, dynamics, noise floor, sound stage. You get my idea. And I can nitpick only about its dynamics uh, via battery power with uh, desktop headphones, but apart from that, this could be one of the nicest sounding players that Fio has ever made. This is a noiseless, this is a powerful and quite organic sounding unit, and I can recommend this one without hesitation. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to like, to dislike, uh, it's up to you. Don't forget to be positive, and I'll see you around. Cheers.